Hi and welcome to a Crafters Tale podcast. This is um, a knit and chat episode where I will um, talk to you about unspun yarns. Yeah, hi and welcome to all um, old viewers and welcome to all new viewers who found this this channel. Um, lots of new viewers have have found this this little corner of the internet um, lately, so I'm really happy. So um, yeah, welcome. I hope you like this content and this episode. I thought we could chat a little bit about unspun yarn because it's my favorite yarn to knit with and I have several projects going on with unspun yarn and here behind me you can see my unspun yarn um, shelf <laughs> where I have all my different unspun yarns um, what should we start with I have no I have not written any plan so I just going going for it uh, can show you my different I have four Four different unspun yarns from different brands. In this way. I can st start by showing you these. So here, the most of the yarn I have, my unspun is new then. So this one and the dark one, this one, this one. So a lot, a lot of that is is new then. And many of you, I think, not, uh, know new then. By now, but Nitiden it's um, from a company called Hörner of Eier. It's from Sweden, where I come from, and their company is not so far from me actually. But this yarn is really local to me, and I love that. And that's because it's my, one of my favorite yarns as well. Because yeah, everything about this yarn is made in Sweden. So the wool is from Sweden. It's washed in Sweden, it's spun in Sweden, or not spun, but it's the yarn is made in their own family mill. And that's so wonderful. I think there's, I don't know if there's any other bigger company in Sweden that is making everything, every step of the way in Sweden. Because we have only one company that washes wool here in Sweden. Uh, most other companies ship the wool to different countries. Poland, I think they have a big washing company. I don't know what it's called, but um, and the Baltic countries maybe. And yeah, Hanna and I is one of the companies that wash their wool in Sweden. And. All the wool is Swedish as well. It's from different um, Swedish breeds, so every color um, is different uh, because it contains different kind of, of wool. Sometimes it's one sort of wool, sometimes it's a mix of, of, breed, of breeds in one plate. So yeah, um, so the wool can be di really different how it feels. For example, for example, this one, if we compare this one and maybe this one. So this is, this is much softer, I think, than this. It's, it's a lot more rustic feel. Okay, now Ada is awake. We'll soon be back. Sorry for the interruption. Ada is a little bit fussy right now because she's teething and yeah, it's not always an easy time. She's chewing 
on her hands all the time and on my fingers and um, her, little, her big sister thinks it's really funny to put her fingers in her mouth and let her chew on her fingers. <laughs> yeah, but she's not sleeping so well right now. So yeah, I'm going around like this most parts of the day, but it's really cozy. I love it. Yeah, so where are we? I was talking about Nutiden yarn, the differences between different yarns. So yeah, every every new color has different oh. reads mixed in it. Well, thank you. You just puked on me. Okay, here we go again. <laughs> um. So yes, this is the big, big biggest difference between the unspun yarns. Uh, because if you go to the next one, I have this one and then I have it here because I'm having a I'm knitting and blood check with this right now, but I will show you soon. So these two are Manchelope by the Wool Dreamers um, company. I think they're in sp from Spain. I think I'm saying it right. I can put it here if that is uh, right. And I don't, I'm not sure if I think they're using the same breeds all the time um, for their for their yarn. They have unspun yarn as well. But they have um, different colors of the Manchelope. Always the white, the not white, and this beautiful like gray. But it's also some blue and some purple specks in it and you can see it in the sun it's really pretty and this is really soft this this yarn but it's totally different from most newton yarns because it's really dry i don't know it's the best word i can use for to describe to describe it it's really wonderful to knit with it but it's really a really dry feeling to it if you know what i mean and it has, it has no bounce at all, I think. Um, unspun yarns don't have so much bounce because they're not spun. So the fibers are like, like straight out because they don't have so much stretch and bounce like spun yarns can have. But this, the Manchelope, I think, has is even more, it's even less stretchy than other unspun yarns that I've tried, if that makes sense. It's the first time I'm using this this yarn. I can show you what I'm knitting. It's um, a test knit for Fox Fox and Folks, yeah, on Instagram is the name. And it's a children's sweater. And with this beautiful rosy mine you pronounce it that way, I don't know, on the sleeves and yeah, I, I started the first store is finished and now I'm knitting the body before I go back to the sleeves and uh, the rosy mine I'm knitting with different spun yarns and it's really fun technique, it's the first time I'm trying this and yeah, it's, I really love the fabric, I'm using um, two strands of the manchelope, but that's also a difference. The manchelope has already it comes like in two strands instead of one. The like blotelope, nutiden, they have only one strand, and it, this the manchelope comes in two strands, so you don't have to. And you knit if you want to knit with two strands, you don't have to use two different plates, and I think that's that's great. And it's also, I think the one straight is already a little bit thicker than most of the Newton yarn can be. Uh, I think that would it would work really well to knit with one strand as well, the Manchelope. Because some of the Newton can be really tricky to work with, work with um, one strand. I took off my, my Sonetto sweater right now, but 
this is actually knitted in one strand of knit needle and it worked okay it was not sometimes it broke of course but it, it was okay but I have knitted a cardigan in this color for my sister and it broke all the time all the time it was not fun at all because this is really really thin and really really like it goes it breaks really really easily I think that also depends on the what ya what what yarn print will they using in the blends and maybe it's it's really soft so I can imagine that it's contains lamb's wool and lamb's wool is more Yeah, uh, lamb's wool is more, it's not as sticky, it's softer and yeah, so every, every Newton color is really unique and they don't make the same combination again um, because they have a shop update every second month I think and every, they have five to six colors every, every shop update they're selling they're not coming back in the same combination so they can have like a, a white natural white uh, but next time it may be a different breed uh, or they mix in some different yeah different breeds so if you buy from from the final iron you really have to buy um, enough yarn because you can't get your hands on it later because they will not sell the same thing but Manchelopi, they ha have their just the solid colors that you can order all the time. I think from their shop, and there's also um, other shops that are selling their yarns. So this I ordered from an Etsy shop um, that I also ordered this, is it? <laughs> this and this unspun yarn from. It's um, that shop is called. Oh, I don't remember. I will put it here and link it down below. But she has a lot of great yarns, and this this unspun yarn is from Lettland. There the shop is from the Etsy shop, and it's from local yarn there. And so, uh, Lettlandic sheep uh, breed. And. I don't know. Right now, she has not, has no, not in the shop, and I don't if she has the same colors all the time, if, or, or if they change. But this is a really thick. It's one strand, but it's really thick. You can see that. Um, and yeah, it or, or these two blades, really beautiful. Look at these colors. Really, it's a bit, a little, a little bit more rustic than uh, the Manchelopi, definitely, but not as rustic, I would say, as Blatolopi. I have one Blatolopi here left, so if I can, yeah, compare this with this, it's the Blatolopi is definitely the most, the most rustic one, and you see all the hair sticking out, Blatolopi. Yeah. Then we come to the last one. <laughs> Where is your here? Let uh, Blatchlopi is made from Icelandic um, wool, from Icelandic sheep, and they have really it's a really rough condition in Iceland, so they have lots of how do we call it in English? Mm, this uh, because a sheep has the undercoat and the overcoat and Icelandic sheep have more of that because they have to yeah protect themselves from from the weather conditions um, there so it's not as it's quite rustic and I can show you some sweaters that I have knitted so this is or a cardigan this is a cardigan I made recently I knitted this in Blötelopi, the beige one, and the green one is Nutiden. And I must say this green one right here 
this is really more bouncy. I, I think it's really easy to see how stretchy and bouncy a yarn is on the cuff because here you can see it's a twisted ribbing and twisted ribbing never like cinches in as much as you, if you don't mm, twist 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 it but it's twist it's cinching in a little bit, little bit. um anyway so and i hold the the stubble the twist ribby and the nitty there and on this one, this is also knitted in Bleutolopi. I hold it together with one strand of um, brushed alpaca from Drops, I think. Um, and two strands of Bleutolopi. So it's a really heavy sweater. And then my last unspun garment that I finished is my tulip sweater by Melody Hoffman and this is knitted in <laughs> in two strands of Nutilla as well um, I think they were all my things ended in unspun yarn I have a hat as well, I'm gonna get it. So this is a, a hat I recently knitted that I was just playing it a little bit with some different cable charts and I knitted this in the Manchilopi. And here you can see what I mean, that it's not stretchy and bouncy at all. It's this, I knitted it in one by one ribbing. And it didn't cinch in at all. Um, normally when you would knit with a spun yarn, one by one rib ribbing would like, yeah, cinch in quite a lot. That doesn't do it at all um, with this yarn. So it's really like, how do you say that? Yeah, not stretchy. Really, I don't find the right word. Stum, I would say. In Swedish and I would I yeah that's a little bit maybe not so good for hats because I had to felt the brim a little bit so it would fit me it was even bigger before and now it's okay I can put it on so you see and but it's not holding like yeah it doesn't do anything the ribbing so yeah, that that's that's the thing that I noticed about this yarn. I have, yeah, I don't know if what you have made for experiences with unspun yarn you feel the same or, yeah, I think, as I said, the my in this cardigan, it cinched in a little bit, not as much as it would be with spun yarn, I think, but definitely more than on this one. So the, it depends also what what yarn you use, but this one is really like yeah, still I don't know how to, how to say. Um, but yeah, well, let's talk about why I love it so much. The unspun yarn. When I knit, I knit quite like hard. It I'm. When I knit a lot, I knit a lot of color work, like smaller things like mitts and so. And my gait is quite. How do you say it? I can't find my words today. I'm sorry. My gait is quite hard. I'm a hard knitter. I'm not. I'm a not a, not a loose knitter. And if I knit a lot of color work, my hands can hurt because I my tension is so. Um, yeah, hard. Hmm. <laughs> if you know what I mean. And when I started to knit with unspun yarn, I really had to relax my hands, and it was really, really nice because then my hands wouldn't hurt as much. It was really more relaxed with my wrists as well, 
and I really love that. It, it, it helps me to relax in knitting because sometimes when I'm knitting with spun yarns I am not as relaxed if I'm knitting with unspun yarns and I love that because I want to knit because it relaxes me um, also and I really just love the fabric that it uh, yeah. that it makes it doesn't it doesn't um, if you knit with spun yarns we you really have to be quite careful that the gauge you're knitting in is good with the the needle size if you knit a sweater in a two in a smaller gauge but the wool is quite thick then if the fabric can be quite dense and stiff and if you knit to, on two bigger needles with a too thin yarn it's quite like floppy loose and that happens with unspun yarn as well yeah. but because it's not spun it can fill out the gaps much better so if you see this um, sweater it's knitted on four millimeter needles and with one strand of of meat hidden and it's quite loose but the the fabric it makes is really really beautiful it, it fills in all the gaps it feels really like a, a nice fabric not not too there's no holes or something that's creating and I think this cardigan or sweater is also knitted on 4.4 or 4.5 millimeter needle and it, this is knitted in with two strands of knitting and it makes of course um not as So the fabric it makes is not as um, flo flowy as, as this one, but yeah, it doesn't, I think when you knit with, what I wanted to say with that is that when you knit with unspun yarn, it doesn't matter as much that your gauge is perfect because the fabric will turn out wonderful anyway. You know what I mean? That's my experience anyway. <laughs> Where are we going? Mm. Uh. Yeah. Peep, peep. <laughs> the sun was shining a little bit too much, so I had to hang something from the front of the window. Hope it's better now. Yeah, where are we? I have a difficult time today to find the exact words, so I'm sorry for that. <laughs> but yeah, let's go on to next next thing. A um, lot of people that are never spun, uh, not never knitted with unspun yarn before, are really is scared because they think it will break all the time and. It will be really, really difficult. But I thought the same when before I started knitting with unspun yarns two years ago, I think. But I think let me see my tulip sweater was the first sweater I knitted with unspun yarns, and I fell in love with with it immediately because it's just such a joy um, to see. This wonderful, wonderful fabric. Um, it's so. I don't know. It's so light, so so airy and light, but but warm. And when you hold it with two strands, it's no problem at all. I think, um, especially new children. I think it's perfect to knit it with two strands. It's my most. It's my favorite. Um, combination. Mm, I'm also knitting a cardigan in two strands 
of Nutrient and one strand of Silk Mohair that I also really love. It makes a little bit of a thicker fabric, even warmer I think. This will be a long cardigan. Um, I have come quite far but I'm, I really want it really really long. Now it goes, yeah, now it's the length of a normal length cardigan I would say but I really I think I want to knit 30 40 more centimeters so it goes down to my knees or well, even longer maybe and I'll be loving this this fabric it's really look at this it's just making such a beautiful fabric because the stitches are evening out because it's not spun it fills out all the gaps um, and that's that's my, my favorite thing I think that is the the fabric it, it is creating is so hmm, how can we describe it so even and so yeah beautiful just just beautiful I love it <laughs> and it's so cozy uh, the sweaters I have knitted in Unspanner is the most, the, my most cozy sweaters. Uh, when you spit, when you knit with spun yarn, some of spun yarn can be quite, even if they are soft, the yarn is soft, it can be a little bit hard. And, and yeah, I don't know now how you could, um, compare them but if you for example if I would compare um, a spun unspun sweater to a in this like if I would knit this sweater in a spun yarn I would probably need more yarn because you it's spun, like it's twisted, so it you need more yarn. So it would be heavier than than this one. I think new Tiden yarn has like five hundred meters per hundred gram plate, and for this sweater, I used not even two plates, so not even two hundred grams of yarn. And it's it's um, a cropped sweater, but it's like boxy and has long sleeves. For normally I would use, and it's I would say it's like a sport weight. Um, or a gauge is like for like for a sport weight a DK DK yarn, and normally you would use maybe three hundred grams approximately um, for this for such a sweater, but if when you need with new with unspun yarn you you need less yarn. And that makes your garments lighter, Let a lot lighter than it, if you would knit with spun yarn. And I really love that because I, I really like light garments that are still warm, if you know what I mean. And I think it's really, for me it's perfect because when I knit with unspun yarn I'm more conscious about knitting. I'm, more, I'm, a, I'm a more conscious knitter I have to be more there in the moment and and think about what I'm doing and not um yeah it's it's and that's important to me that I be I'm more conscious with my with my making so I think that's just yeah beautiful that I can I don't every everyone is different. So for someone that is not as some for someone does who da, wants to make like watch a movie or do different other things at the same time as knitting, um maybe it's not a, a the perfect choice to knit with unspun yarns. <laughs> but for me it's perfect. And I think many knitters feel the same when it comes to knitting. That is something that we want to enjoy, that we want to be more 
like conscious and then it's the perfect yarn choice for you and I can tell you it's not not hard at all um, many knitters use it with one strand of silk mohair and I yeah I'm doing it doing that with this cardigan and I really enjoy it because it's it's um, it's not breaking at all it gives gives the the fabric or the yarn more stability when you have it with, with a strand of, of silk mohair and that can help you if you are a little bit uncertain I can re recommend you that you start with with a project that and he'll hold it together with one strand of silk mohair. It also works really well with you if you would like to knit in a lighter gauge to use one strand and one strand of thing, um, silk mohair instead. Or, or other um, like lace weight yarn. Like in this sweater I used a brushed alpaca. So yeah, what more could, could we talk about? Um, yeah, there there have some more unspun yarns breed um, companies out there. For example, Wooden Twine. She has sold some unspun yarns, and here in Sweden, we have also Field Mokeriet. They are selling the natural colors like white, um, natural black, brown, grays. Uh, really beautiful. I have not, not tried it yet, but I really want to and it's all Swedish wool also and washed and like produced in Sweden but I think you their website is only in Swedish and I don't know if they ship um, to other countries but I can link to it anyway if you're interested and if you live in Sweden and have never heard about them um, yeah and then Pletulopi has of course is the the biggest known unspun yarn I think um, it's from East Tex the company from Iceland the same company that produces Lepelopi and yeah they have really beautiful many beautiful colors that you can order from everywhere in the world I think it's the most easiest unspun yarn you can you can get your hands on. And I would say Newton is the diffi most difficult one because they only have a shop update every second month and then um, and you have to be really quick if you want to get your hands on because it's sold out really really fast. I'm a patron for New for Hannah Ayer so patrons get early access to the shop updates and but if you so I can recommend you become a patron but they have not always um, space for more patrons sometimes they're opening more up more spaces so I recommend you to uh, follow them on Instagram and I think they have a newsletter as well you can um, so you have can get information there uh, but and I think of what's my favorite yarn so far I have not knitted Very good. I have not knitted so much with this one, but I feel quite similar to the Manchalopi. Um, or a, a mix between Manchalopi and Plotolopi, I think, because it's also the yarn is also a little bit thicker than some new tea And yeah, I, I really love like this as well. But what I love about New Zealand and that makes it my favorite one is that it is for the first produced in the same country as I am living in and it's really local to me um, and everything is made here in Sweden and I really really love that because it's really important to me that we in here in Sweden start producing more own yarns because a couple of years ago, now it's become better, but a couple of years ago still 80% of all the wool was thrown away because we don't have many big spinning mills here in Sweden and sheep owners, they hadn't... Uh, spinning mills wouldn't, wouldn't take small amounts of wool 
so it was cheaper to throw it away uh, on burn it for example than to collect it and send it to a mill because many mills only take 20 kilos um, at once and you have to have quite many sheep so you come to this amount now we have more and more smaller mills that take uh, like from from five kilos of wool and uh, that is more manageable for a sm smaller sheep owners that has not have not so many many sheep that's so great and so it's popping up more and more ways that if that you can sell your wool here in Sweden um, we have also also something that is called Ull Vermedlingen it's a website that you can put up your wool for sale and you can yeah look there and it, that is really great I think so it's it's getting better and I really appreciate when companies um, use the resources that are in the country and that, that's because that's one I think a lot about Hannah and I that they're really um, washing the wool in Sweden and then they have of course their own um, spinning mill but as I said many bigger companies they spin the yarn um, in East Europe Eastern Europe and wash it there as well because it's cheaper and I I can understand that because but I, I really think it's important that we look at what we have in our country so it can be yeah it can be better again if you look um, to our neighboring country Norway they have so many spinning mills and they're producing lots of yarn a lot of more yarn than we here in Sweden and I hope that we can yeah now maybe not compete but if we can like become more like Norway in the future that we have in the future more spinning mills and maybe more companies that also wash wash wool or maybe spinning mills that can wash wool um, and yeah so it will will be possible for more people to produce beautiful Swedish yarns because we have lots of beautiful old breeds here in Sweden and there's also something I love if you're a patron at Hörner Eier she has Caroline she has a podcast and she always tells you about all the new colorways and she tells tells you about different breeds and I know a lot of different Swedish old Swedish breeds and I love them and so that's really really wonderful to hear and I just love that the story behind every every plate every color and that is also why I, I love them so much because it's history behind it and thought and, and so much so much thought and I really love love that about about New Tiden yarn um, but what I love about Blötelopi is that they have the the same color they have so many different colorways that you can choose from and it is easily more easily um, accessible for in different countries and it's not so expensive and that is also great if you want to test out um unspun yarn i really can, can recommend blotolupi it's not the softest softest yarn it's quite quite rustic but if you love rustic yarn it is perfect, I think, and they have been just beautiful colors. I think maybe surely like twenty or even more different colorways. <sighs> yeah, is there something more to say? I don't think so. Um, I usually knit with metal needles when I knit with unspun yarn because I think it's more easily. It, when I knit with um, wooden needles, the yarn will it will more easily stick to my needles um, than when I use metal needles. But yeah, it's it's 
<clears throat> what you prefer. It's yeah. different from everyone, I think. Yeah, I think that was everything <laughs> that I. No, I didn't didn't do any knitting. I wanted to knit on my on this sweater. Yeah. I have to adjust. Also, an, a thing I really love um, is that where is it? Can't find my yarn. If the yarn breaks, so I can find find my yarn in this mess. Here it is. If the yarn breaks, you can really, really easily, like just felt it together, just overlapping and just rolling it a little bit. You don't even have to spit splice it. Just it is enough if you just roll a little bit between your fingers and then you can continue knitting. Because that is a thing that will happen to you a lot when you knit <laughs> with unspun yarn. That it will break if you take a pause and yeah. That, that happens but it's also really easy easy to just fold it together and when you yeah it's it's also makes it really easy not to, not to have too many ends to weave in because you just can like fold it together really easily in the beginning I always knit in the ends direct, directly in like in my knitting and then I have not, not 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 many ends to weave in because I don't like that, and that is great. And it just melts in into the fabric. You can can't see it as much because it's yeah not not spun. And I really like that. Um, yeah, I think that was everything I had to say about unspun yarn. Um, this morning I. Yeah, I had two ideas for my knit and chat. One was talk about unspun yarn, and the other one was to t talk about sustainable knitting, to be a more sustainable knitter, and so on. And I let you vote on Instagram. It was really tight. I think I was all, almost the same. And because I ha did wear uh, an unspun sweater today and have a lot of, lots of projects with unspun yarn, I thought. <laughs> I will start with that, but I will really soon um, record another knit and chat and chat to, to you about um, sustainable knitting. So if you have any questions about that topic, please let me know. I really would be happy to hear hear about that. Um, <laughs> they're just hanging there, hang down. And let me know if you have any other questions. And yeah, I I am planning a lot of new designs in the coming year with unspun yarn. So if you are interested about to hear more about that, you can follow me on Patreon. I will link to that down below. I will I'm recording a Patreon podcast every month, to tell you a little bit about my plans and what I'm working on and so on. So yeah, go check it out if you're interested and I will also soon record a normal episode just to show you all my other um, projects because I've started a lot of projects lately. I have not done so much knitting lately because Ada is quite fuzzy right now and wants to nurse all the time. Uh, in the evening she's like cluster feeding all the time and yeah <laughs> it's a little bit easy sometimes to find the time to knit but I have some new projects that I really wanted to share with you and so stay tuned for that I will hopefully be able to record soon again I hope you liked this this episode and yeah, give it a thumbs up and and subscribe if you liked liked it and I see you soon. Bye.